The Story of St. Nicholas by Mildred Lockhart. Chapter 7, Thaddeus's Family. Nick picked up the sack that held Anya's belongings and slung it over his shoulder. His back bent beneath the heavy load as they started the upward climb to Thaddeus's house where Anya would live now. She walked beside him carrying her broom and a basket with odds and ends and salt, spices, and other small household treasures. They both tried to think of things that would take their minds off the parting with Uncle John. It's about six years, Nick remarked, since I've been to Thaddeus's house. Maybe no one will recognize me. You were a boy then, Anya answered, and now you are a man. The girls were little ones then. Now Thecla is ten and Elena eight. Carita is six. She cannot walk without a crutch, but she manages well. As they drew near the house, a big ram burst through the gateway with a rosy-cheeked girl chasing after. Spying on you, she cried, Catch the ram, please. We'll get him, Elena, Anya called. She picked up a broken pine branch and used it to head the ram towards some bushes. Grab its horns, Nicky, she ordered. He did. He held so tight so as to not get bucked. Quickly, Elena knelt in the dust beside the big shaggy animal. She patted its rough back, talking comfortingly and promising to be gentle if he would stand still while she removed a thorn from its hoof. Good old giant, she kept saying. The ram seemed to understand and stood quietly. Swiftly, she pulled out the thorn. Then the ram leaped up, tossed Nick into the bushes, and galloped away, leaving Elena sprawling but unhurt in the dust. She picked herself up, laughing, as she brushed back her glossy brown hair. Her round cheeks were smudged, her skirt torn, but this did not trouble her. The ram was all right. Seeing her father with Thecla and Carita coming toward the gateway, she called, Anya has come. The young man who carried her things is very strong. He held giant by the horns. The nobleman came forward, recognizing Nicholas at once. Thecla followed with Carita, who limped slowly. Thaddeus welcomed Nicholas, explained to his daughters, this is our friend Nicholas, who made the toy horses when you were little. Thecla greeted Nicholas with a gentle smile. We still have those horses, she said in a low, sweet voice. Nicholas would have known her anywhere because of her golden hair and her eyes as blue as the sky. At first, Carita stood close to her father, looking up at Nicholas with soft brown eyes, not saying a word. But after a while, when they went to see a little bird with a hurt wing, she forgot to be shy. She took Nicholas's hand and said, Come, see the nest we made in a basket. While the little girls chirped to the bird and fed it crumbs, Nicholas stood with their father watching. Three more different sisters never were, Thaddeus said fondly. Thecla is always polite, even-tempered, quiet and kind. Elena is noisy and rough and tumble, but she has a soft heart, especially for anything that's been hurt. Carita is timid and frail, yet she does not complain because she cannot run as the others do. Of course, at times, they're all naughty little girls. However, Nick saw none of the naughtiness that afternoon. They became real friends with him and took him all around. They showed him a waterfall near the house and a tame deer and a flock of sheep. Giant, whose horns Nick had held, bad loudly at the sight of them and scrambled away over rocks with the rest of the flock following. It seemed to Nicholas like a very small flock. The evening came too soon. Thaddeus and his daughters urged Nicholas to stay overnight at their home, but he had arranged to go to Myra that night by a camel caravan. Will you please come to see us soon again, Nicholas? Carita begged. Anya spoke quickly. He will come when he can. Someday you will call him Father Nicholas, for he's planning to become a priest of the church. Elena exclaimed. He will be a good Father Nicholas. Everybody will like him. As they walked a short way down the road with him, Carita said softly, Do not forget us. I will never forget you, he promised. We will always be friends, even though I will not be able to visit you very often. That night, as he rode a swaying camel along the Myra Road, he thought of the family in the shabby old house. He wished he knew of some way to lighten the kind nobleman's burdens. Although Thaddeus smiled often at his little girls, he was very wan and sad-looking when he thought no one was looking. 